Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I'm going to solve this question on lead code regarding user activity for the past 30 days, part two, and try to work you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. The difficulty level of this question is easy, and this question has been asked in Netflix, Facebook, and Zoom interviews over the past couple of years. Okay, let's jump right in. We are given a table called activity with four different columns. User ID, session ID, activity date, and activity type. There is no primary key for this table. It may have duplicate rows. The activity type column is an enum of type open session, end session, scroll down, send message. The table shows the user activities for a social media website. Note that each session belongs to exactly one user. Okay. We are asked to write a SQL query to find the average number of sessions per user for a period of 30 days ending in ending on 27th of July 2019, including these dates, right? Rounded to two decimal places. The sessions we want to count for a user are those with at least one activity in that time period. Okay, let's go through this example, right? So for here, you have a bunch of, you know, different user IDs, sessions, dates, etc. right? So it says uh, 30 days ending on 27th of July 2019 and you need to include this, right? So if you go 30 days before this, you are going to end on 28th of June 2019. So between 28th of June 2019 and 27th of July 2019, if you find any activity, right, you need to include that in our calculation of average number of sessions per user, right? So for example, let's see uh, like how do we calculate it here? So from 28th of June till 27th of July, right? So these are going to be included. These are also going to be included, right? But if you see this, these two last two rows are not going to be in included, right? Because it is before 28th of June, 2019, right? So here, if you see average number of sessions per user, right? So how many ses sessions in total were there? So you have one, two, three and four, right? So four different sessions and how many users? One, two and three. So four out of three, so, or that is four divided by three. So that is the average number of sessions per user, right? So that is going to be 1.33. And if you look at the output, that is what we have. So basically what we need to do is the first thing we need to only include those rows where activity days lies in that 30 day period that ends on 27th of July, 2019. So let's start building this query, right? So from this table called activity, right? So this table is called activity. We need to only keep those rows where activity date, right? Where activity date is between. So we calculated that 30 days before 27th of July, 2019. And when you need to include both the dates is going to be 28th of June, 2019. So 2019, June and 28. If you don't want to do this calculation, you can also use a different function, right? Uh, like basically subtract 30 days from the day that has been given. Let me know in the comment section what that function can be and how the query is look, going to look like. I have solved a previous question using that function. So in this video, I'm not using that function. I'm directly hard coding it, right? Let me know in the comment section if you can if you do remember that function, right? So from 28th of June, 2019 and the end date should be 2019-7-27, right? So if the dates are between these, then only you are going to consider them, right? So obviously in this example, these two rows are going to be excluded. Now, once you have this, what you need? You need to count the number of distinct sessions, right? And then you need to divide it by the number of users. Right. So that is how you are going to get num uh, sessions per user, right? Average number of sessions per user. So return the count of distinct session ID and you need to divide this by count of distinct user ID, right? Now, once you calculate this, so this is going to give you average, but you need to also round it to two decimal places. So what you do is you simply include this in round, right? And it should be to two decimal places. Now, this is not yet done, right? Obviously, we need to alias this as, you know, average sessions per user, but there's one more thing that is remaining in this case. 
consider like you are given a table where none of the dates lie in this right so obviously when you will do from activity where activity date is between these two dates if none of the dates lie between these dates so it is going to have null right so you calculate the averages and all that and round it to two decimal places it is going to basically return null right but if you think about it ideally what should be the case if there is no data between these dates what is the average number of sessions per user zero right because you don't have any data in between them so but if you just you know use this this much code it is going to return null so what do we do in that case our favorite if null function right that is if this turns out to be null just substitute it with the value that we want in our case we want it to be 0, 0.00 why 0, 0.00 because you need to have rounded to two decimal places right so you can simply write if null that is if this entire thing you know comes out to be null just replace this by 0, 0.00 so now this is complete and you need to alias this part as average sessions per user right okay so this looks good let me go ahead and run this to see what happens okay so this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases so this passes all the test cases and this is how we do it again very simple question all we had to do was you know make sure that we are only including the dates that are given in this question right and then you need to calculate the average sessions per user so you divide by the number distinct sessions in those dates divided by you know number of users that were in those sessions right distinct amount round it to two decimal places and also make sure that if it comes out to be null then ideally it should be 0, 0.00 and we alias this as whatever was required in the question so yeah, this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or a more efficient way you can think of to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and until then i will see you guys in the next video